so you are welcome back to the channel as you know we talk to people we give you success stories people who have been in jacks people who are um, trying to go out of jacks and um, they share their experience with us uh, it is um we need tv step one tv please kindly like our video you subscribe to our youtube channel if you have not subscribed to the youtube channel and the interview is brought to you by ash token it is the best cryptocurrency in the whole world if you want to invest in anything that has to do with crypto then ash token is the best the numbers is on the screen just call them and make an inquiry we will guide you through so that you can safely um, purchase your crypto with ash token don't forget to use the promo code obibini i have a brother here my brother how are you i'm good okay your name i'm maxwell Tang. maxwell are you a ghanian no i'm a liberian okay you are in ghana what are you doing here actually i was brought to ghana 2021 by my mother for rehabilitation okay uh, were you in any form of addiction or something yeah, I'm addicted to heroin and cocaine. You started in Liberia? Actually. Okay, so who introduced you to uh, heroin and cocaine, crack cocaine, right? Well, it's a long story, but I'm the fourth child of six children born to my parents, and I was brought up in a Christian home. But along the way, during my second year in secondary school, I had a girlfriend who was a crack addict and I didn't know. So one day when I went to visit her, I burst into her room with her knocking on the door. So I caught her on the table and she was like abusing the substance. So I was like curious to know which type of substance she was using. So I asked her. Were you smoking yourself? At that time I was using marijuana, but I was not on a hard cold drugs at that time. So I asked her and she told me that it was heroin and it's used to stimulate you for sexual intercourse. So, and whenever we have sex, you always perform a bit higher than me. So I decided to get a taste of the drugs to be able to perform better. So that's how I started using the drugs. So she introduced you? Yeah, she's actually introduced me to it. And did it affect your performance when it comes to sex? You were performing well. They increased my sexual performance, but it had a, a whole lot of negative impact on my social life. Can you share some of the negative impact it had on your social life? Maybe? Like for my mom, my mom, she's a politician back home. I don't come from a very rich home, but I come from a home that they can't afford. So my mom was elected to parliament and she was serving her constituents faithfully until I got introduced to heroin. And I started to do things that brought shame to her. And after a couple of weeks, she told me that, T-Boy, you have to stop this habit. So I told her, Mom, I'm willing to stop it, but it's an addiction and I can't just get out of it. So I have to go through rehabilitation. So she left for the United States and I was in Liberia, living in the ghetto. So one bright morning when I woke up, my aunt came with a vehicle to pick me up and told me that I was coming to Ghana. So I hastily went and put myself together and I got on the vehicle and I was flown directly to the house of St. Francis, Ashama. And I spent six months there, but I relapsed. That was in 2001. 2021. 2021. You were brought here in Ghana. Yes. Sir. And um, you were taken to a rehab center. Yes. And within six months, you relapsed. What happened? I spent six months in recovery. Okay. Because as a drug addict, you can never recover. Every day you are recovering because addiction is a lifetime disease that cannot be cured. So each and every day you have to wake up and make a deep and personal commitment to continue living clean and sober. So after the six months, I got a big brother in Ghana who's called Junior. So I had an interaction with him because he stayed in the Terman Bell. So... After a couple of days, he told us we should go out. So we went out. When we went out, we had a couple of drinks. He told me, oh, mommy, let's go to the back. So we went to the back. The same old stuff I was trying to resist after I spent the six months in the rehab, it was brought back again. As an addict, once you have not had a personal encounter with Christ, 
I don't care. Like, it even take you from here and fly you to London to break your addiction is something hard. So, um, when was the last time you took drugs? Well, I've been drug free for the past 90 days, three months, three weeks. And I'm grateful to the Almighty God for that because if I take a look back at my life, seeing where I'm coming from and where I am now and where I want to go, I'm so grateful to the Raymond family for the help they are giving me. Um, so how, looking at the number of years you've been in jerks, if I should ask you, how long have you been in jerks? Will you be able to tell me? Yes, yes. Okay, so how long? I've been in jerks since 2010, so it's like 13 years. 13 years in jerks. So when you don't have money to buy, what do you do? Actually, back home, I robbed my mom to get money to use drugs. I'm not the type of junkie who go to the street to get the money because I already got the money there. So I would just create some type of story and be able to get the phone and go out and use. But after I came to Ghana and I did the house of St. Francis and I feel her, she got first and she blocked me on all social media. So that's I, your mom? Yeah, that's my mom. So I had to join a gang in Tierman for us to go out at night and do robbery and stealing to be able to make our, to be able to take our substance during the morning hours. So you were taking money from people? Yeah. And mobile phones? Absolutely. Well, how, are you, how are you doing it? Forcefully. Using guns or knife? No. For me, I'm a foreigner, so I was a bit afraid to get involved with the robbery group because I fear that if I'm caught, I will face hard prison sentence. So I joined a local gang and we used knife and other instruments to be able to scare you away and take your belongings and go and give it to the pusher and get the substance and abuse it. Has there been a case where you people stab someone with a knife or something? No, no, no. I've not encountered any problem like that. Whenever I go out, it's like we are always lucky. We'll just be able to just put fear into you and drive you away and take your goods on you and go and sell it and get proceeds. What, what if the person resists? We go out with the intention that we have to get it. So if we go out and you resist, sometimes if I'm in the position that I'm carrying the weapon, I will not be go, actually, I got a little bit of fear. So I will not be able to stab you to death, but I will juke you somewhere and be able to take the stuff on you. With, with, with the weapon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> when was the last time you heard from your mom? Well, I've been in contact with her. I talked to her the last night. It was my birthday, the 30th of May. She called me and wished me a happy birthday. And I promised her that I'm not going back to Joss because this time around, she has spent a whole lot on me. Back when I did all the rehabs and I couldn't get clean and so on. So I was flown here for that. And I feel her. So this time around, I took her my own personal initiative to come to Rima and be able to transform my life. So through this process, I've promised her that this time is the last time I'm not going back to drugs no more because I think that if you are in recovery and you have crest within your recovery, then your recovery will be possible. But if you don't have crest within your recovery, you can't do it on your own because you need God to give you that extraordinary strength each and every day to continue living clean and sober. Wow. Do you have plans of going back to Liberia after your rehabilitation program? Yeah, I got plans on going back to Liberia, actually, because my country is going to election this October, and I will, the cause of my mom losing her seat from parliament to the opposition, Congress for Democratic Change. And since I'm a change man now, and will be going to the pools in October, I would like to go back home for the people in the constituents to see me live a good life and be able to put her back to office. It means that your behavior affected your mom Seriously, seriously. People were insulting and saying all sort of things to her because of your behavior. Yeah, because a certain place where you're not supposed to be at a certain time and people see you there and they know the home you come from, it has impact on the person who you are staying with. Oh. Wow. So now you're a changed person. I'm totally changed in Christ. 90 days of drugs. 90 days three months, three weeks. So it's 100 and 
121 days. How do you feel now? I feel very relieved because now I woke up in the morning. I go and pace after pacing. We have our breakfast from there. We go through our daily activities. And it's very, very enjoyable. Then to be in the street and be hacking yourself or where you in a place where you can't bath, you can't pace, you don't have clean clothes to put on. And you found a home that you can get all those things and be able to live a better life. But yet and still, true friends, you got addicted to drugs and you keep tolerating, tolerating, and be became shamed of the family. So I'm grateful to Raymond Ghana for what they have done for me as a foreigner living in Ghana. Okay, so we wish you all the best. We'll keep checking up on you anytime we are here in Kumasi. Thank you so much, and I wish you all the best too for having this interview with me, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So we just had an interview with our brother, and um, uh, he's currently doing so well, and we are just praying that God will see him through uh, the rehabilitation program, and he's going to go back to Liberia, and um, I'm, I'm sure the day he goes back to Nigeria, friends and family, everybody will be happy to see him. God bless you for watching the video. Still, is Ash Token. If you want to invest in any cryptocurrency, it's Ash Token. Call the number on the screen. Use the promo code OBBINI. Bye-bye. Have you heard about the crypto for the planet? Now, here's why you should get the ASH token. The ASH token is a platform for funding business initiatives that aims to eliminate pollution from the global environment. ASH token is navigated by experts whose profile and faces are known and available to you. The ASH token is not just a coin. You will be supporting eco-friendly companies to make the world green. The ASH token is backed by real companies outside the crypto ecosystem. Ash Token is registered in the United States of America, both at the federal level and also in the state of Wyoming. You can walk into any Ash Token office in the US and right here in Ghana. Sign up now, get that Ash. Ash Token is supported by GCS Fibers and GCS Ghana Limited. For inquiries, you can visit Accra Head Office, Cantonment, adjacent to the Italian Embassy, whole office inside Bayport Building, third floor, opposite the whole high court. You can call us on 0303 942 268.